Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at StarCoder. So this is one of the videos that I've been putting off for about a week or so, where I was trying to see if some of the other models that were also code models were going to be released so we could benchmark it against some other models and stuff like that. Unfortunately, it seems the Replit model has only released, they've only released their small version, and we're still waiting for them to release the bigger version that they said recently that they would. Anyway, StarCoder is a very interesting model for a whole bunch of different reasons. For starters, it's not just one model. It's a collection of models. And it's an interesting pro project that it's come about. So this looks like it's Hugging Face combined with some other people to train up an open source code model that's of a decent size. So we're talking about the base models being 15 billion parameters. It's also trained for a trillion tokens which puts it into that nice spot of where we've actually got something that has had beyond the chinchilla training scaling there. We've also got some interesting things in here in that they've made uh, a number of fine tune instruct chat versions of this model to look at. So this is something that we can look at it as well. So start coder base is the base model that they're talking about. And then you'll see star coder, star chat alpha is another fine tune model uh, for this. So the model itself actually has a, a sequence length that it can take in of 8,000 tokens, which puts it in comparison to GPT-4, the base model GPT-4 in size of sequence length. It's a lot longer than a lot of the other models that have been trained out there. And because we've got that and we've got the trillion tokens that it's been trained on, it allows it to do quite well at a lot of the things. Now I'll say straight out that this is not as good as GPT-4 for doing coding tasks and stuff like that. It is, however, better than a lot of the other code models that are out there. So that makes it worth looking at. They've also done a few different things with the way they've trained this. So. You've got training where it can be just generation and continual generation, but there's also got training in there for doing fill in the gap kind of stuff as well with this kind of thing. So it, this is their blog post. They talk about doing the evaluation and stuff like that. They show that how well this can do, uh, that it's doing quite well compared to a lot of the other open source models for code tasks in here. And then, like I said before, they then also trained it on a number of fine tuning tasks to create a number of these different models. One of them being this tech assistant prompt where they've got quite long prompts for doing these kind of things. And th this creates a lot of issues where you're actually setting this up that what you're seeing here is just what the person types in. It's not the full prompt that is going into the, the actual model, which I'll show you later on when we look at this. So the data set that they're using for this is called the stack. And from what I understand, this is basically all code that has been permissively licensed. I think a lot of it's come from GitHub, maybe from other sources as well. They put a lot of effort into removing any sort of personal identifiable information in this. And that's one of the cool things that they actually do in here is that they've released other models, including this sort of star PII, which is a detection model for detecting personal identifiable information, which I know is a, an issue for a lot of companies that so they want to be able to filter that kind of uh, data out of documents and stuff like that. Here is a model now that you can use for doing that. The license for these things is not just the straight open source license. We're talking about something that's got a, a special open rail license. I'm not a fan of these, but it, at least it's better than say Meta's Llama license. It's definitely worth you, you know, checking out for yourself. So they've got a paper going through it. They've got the code that they used for this. And then on Hugging Face, they've got a number of the different demos and the different tools for this as well. So if we look in here, we can see the actual models themselves. And we can see the tools in here. One of the tools that it's really cool is that they've made a VS Code uh, plugin which uses this model in the cloud. So you're pinging it still in the cloud, but uses this model to basically operate kind of like Copilot does inside VS Code. So if you have issues with Copilot for whatever reason, this is an alternative that you could try for doing sort of autocomplete tasks 
inside of VS Code here. Okay, so when we jump in to look at the models, we can see there are quite a number of these models on the Hugging Face Hub uh, that belong to Big Code here. You see they've got a number of different spaces and quite a lot of models in there. So the first one we're going to look at is the base model, the star code base model. So this is the model with all the original pre-training in it. And basically is the one that's been trained on a trillion tokens before any sort of fine tuning and stuff has gone on here. So this is the basic model, etc. The next model that we look at is star coder. So the star coder model is the model that you would use for doing text generation. Here we can basically look at this. Now we can see that there's some really interesting things in here. So it was trained on the stack, like I talked about before, but it's also trained to use multi-query attention. So this is actually a system for doing faster decoding that was created by Noam Jazia, who's one of the authors uh, of the original Transformer paper, one of the key authors on the T5 paper, on a lot of papers. Uh, and is now one of the founders of the company uh, Character AI. It talks about the 8,000 token window. We've talked about that. The other interesting thing is that they've got this fill in the middle objective as well. So if we look down, we see the basic generation here. We can see that, okay, if we're just generating something out, we load up the model and we do the generation. The fill in the middle is where we can basically put it a token between two lots of code, for example, and it will work out what code should actually go between those parts there. So this could be useful for a number of different tasks where you want it to basically write a function and then you can give it the sort of the start of the function and what it should return at the end. And then in the middle, you're not sure what you want it to do. You can basically put that token in there and it will run that. So some you know, problems with this model or some issues with this model is that this is not trained in any way to be a instruct model or anything. This is just trained for doing generation. So they do make the point that if you're just going to ask questions of this, you're not going to get great responses. You can, however, use this technical assistant prompt, which is, let's have a look at that. So the technical assistant prompt is basically this really long prompt, which sort of does a lot of in-context learning to try and get the model to be doing some instruction kind of tasks in here. So I found it to be hit and miss with this kind of thing. Definitely you're better to go for the actual fine tune one for the chat and, and instruct tasks which we'll look at in, in a second. They've got a space, a hugging face spaces for playing with this. You can see here, I can basically take in the hello world, basically just define and then generate, and it will basically decide what to put in there. If I change this <clears throat> and I generate, you'll see that, okay, now it's printing out the hello world. So now uh, it's going to do a doc string for me. Uh, it's going to tell me what's going on there. And it's basically... Actually, it's not reprinting it. It's just returning it uh, in this way. So you do find that it is a bit of hit and miss with this, this. To give you an example of one of the in the middle ones, I've got some examples down here. If we look at this example, you can see that we've got a function here and we've got some logic you know, for that function. And then we've got the this bit where it's just fill in the middle here. So if we run this, we can see that after the if len list one is greater it basically fills in what it thinks should go in there for that. So that can be useful for doing something. It's a different kind of generation than we normally do with one of these models, but it comes in quite useful for this kind of task. So they make the point up here that, again, that this is not an instruction model, and they recommend that you check out Star Chat for that kind of thing. So what is Star Chat? Star Chat is basically their fine-tuned model. So they've got a blog post on this as well where they talk about that uh, star code has come along. It's very impressive. That there are other models out there. They talk about the Replit 3 billion model that I talked about. Unfortunately, as far as I know, this hasn't been released yet. It's just the 1.3 billion parameter model that's been released there. Anyway, they talk about how they fine tune this and they fine tune this to be a personalized coding assistant for this. And to, to do this, they've basically used a bunch of, I think it's mostly Python code that they're focused on for this. 
but they've, they've done a couple of different things. So they've fine tuned it with deep speed zero that we can look at in perhaps another video. But the one that I found interesting was this chat markup language. And this also drove me crazy a little bit and trying to get, you know, this to actually work uh, properly. So if we look at the playground for this, you'll see they've got a whole playground for this. And in here, we can basically ask it uh, a number of things, but just like uh, a GPT-4 uh, model or uh, one of the newer models from OpenAI, they have this system of having a system prompt, a uh, user, and then a user prompt uh, that goes along with it. So this is their system prompt that they've got in there. We could override this, but it, I've got that in there. And then if I come in here and I basically, okay, going to change the, the parameters on it. But if I come in here and I basically ask it to write uh, some code, so let's say write a, a function in JavaScript to reverse the words in a given string and capitalize that can spell and right. All right. And you'll see that sure enough up here, we're getting the chat. So it's not just outputting code now, it's giving us the code, but also like a, a chat assistant of going through it much more like chat GPT or GPT four does if you're using their online user interface for this kind of thing. Okay. It's slowing down a lot there uh, at the end. Let's let this get to the ending. Okay. It's finally finished. I've just cut out uh, a chunk there to basically put it in. So it was actually quite slow at the generation here. It looks to have done an okay job. We can see that it's splitting it up. Uh, it's basically reversing things. It's turning them to uppercase what we'd expect in here. The key thing I want you to see though, is that this is operating much more like an instruct model, a chat model that we'd expect that we can basically ask it different questions. If we ask it, you know, the meaning of life. Okay. So we asked it for the meaning of life and sometimes it'll just give 42 and here it's going to give a very long answer for this. But you can see here that the idea is that you can put both code into this. You can put just normal conversational English into it, and it will be able to handle it. So what I wanted to do was show this running locally, and it turned out to be much more of a challenge than I originally thought it was going to be. So uh, I tried first with the other star coder models, and I found them to be very hit and miss with the output that was coming with them. Uh, often you get overly long generations and you might get what you want at the start of the generation, but then it goes on to generate a lot of things that were not that useful. So this is their star chat alpha. Now I'm not sure if there is a hug and face endpoint for this. I know there are endpoints for the other ones, but I'm not sure if there's an endpoint for this particular one that you can use for free or whether it's something you have to pay. So this is a, a, a 15 billion parameter model. You need a pretty good GPU to run this. I'm using an A100 here to go through this. I'm basically loading it up. And one of the challenges that I had was that you run this at the start and start generating, and it just doesn't generate very useful things. And this is where I found that, okay, problem was you must get the prompt very much in the system that they, or in the, the format that they have the prompt to be. So just showing you an example of what the prompt should look like. It should have a system token, a new line, then whatever's going to be input to the system, an end token, a new line, then a user token, a new line, and then the input that you would actually write in there, then an end token, a new line, then an assistant. And once you get that right, then it starts to generate, you know, quite nicely. So I've put together a, a little f function here to basically handle that handle the outputs. I've set the max length just to 256, but you could certainly come along and uh, play with this yourself. So you'll see here, if I ask it, you know, write a, a Python function that reverses each word uh, and in an input string, it's able to basically go through and do that. And then it's giving us the text out as well, where it's describing what's going on in there as, as well. And then I can also ask it coding questions. So I can ask it things like, what is Flask? You see here, it, it talks about, for those of you who don't know, Flask is a system that we often use for serving apps in Python. So Flask is a micro web framework written in Python. It's classified as a micro framework because it does not require particular tools or libraries. But it's got a, you know, a pretty decent understanding or a semi-decent understanding of what Flask is. I can also then just ask it to keep generating something. So 
Here I asked it basically make it a, a scraping function for me. And I'm just going to have scrape URL, pass in the URL. That's all I've given it. Didn't write any uh, text about it. And it, you can see that it's basically decided to use beautiful soup. It hasn't included the imports there. So we could come back through and, and then ask it, hey, include the imports statements as well. But we can see that, okay, it's using request library to get the URL, beautiful soup to basically pass that URL. And then it's going to extract some data and return it there. We can see also for the writing a JavaScript function that sorts a list alphabetically. In this case, it seems to have done something quite simple here with the list.sort. Anyway, uh, have a play with this. If you want to try and run this locally on your machine, you will need a pretty powerful GPU to be able to run it. This is bigger than even the Vicuna models, et cetera, that we've played with in the past. But if you're running this in 8-bit, it's something that you should be able to use. You will need to make sure that you use your auth authentication token in here because you'll find with a lot of these models, if we click into them, you have to agree because of the license and the way that the license works, you have to basically opt in just to be able to have your account be able to download the model. And that means you then have to have an you know, authentication token to prove that you are who you are when you're downloading the model. So that uh, can be a bit frustrating as well, but, but certainly something that you can get through. Anyway, the other thing I, that I'll look at in probably the next video is that these models, the coding models themselves, have a lot of interesting qualities. And one of the qualities is that they turn out to be very good at reasoning much more than models that are just trained on text alone. So I want to look at that in another video. And then we can also look at like perhaps how we could use that with Langchain to replace some of the models that are no longer available for doing things like the PAL chain and that kind of thing. All right. As always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found this useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.